Welcome guys, uh, a bit more standard today with another Mastery Pass Rare. Uh, today it's Woodcaller Automaton, so for 10 mana you get an 8-8. Eight, eight. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, untap target land you control. It becomes a tree folk creature with haste and base power and toughness equal to Woodcaller Automaton's base power and toughness. And it's still a land, so yeah, you uh, play it for 10 mana and you'll get an 8-8. Eight, eight. You'll turn a land into an 8-8 haste and that land will untap as well. So it's, I think it's, yeah, pretty decent sort of um, 16 power and toughness. It will land to the board. Uh, actually, an, quite importantly, I'd, uh, so I just noticed something I didn't notice before. The enter the battlefield effect only works if you cast it. So I've actually, I happen to have made the right choice here. I didn't make another fight rigging deck this is a ramp deck, so we will be able to hopefully pay 10 mana to cast this properly, or at least cast the uh, prototype version for uh, 4 mana. So this is a, um, uh, a, a mono green ramp deck. Uh, we're using power stones, so we've got 4 Argothian uh, Opportunist. We, ha we also have Azusa's Many Journeys, so we're trying to play extra land if we possibly can and we also have mana dudes so I've got a couple of animal loam speakers I've got a couple of uh, Gwenna Gwenna's Eyes of Gaia and I believe I have a couple of cradle clear cutters so these are yeah if you cast this at full cost it's it's it can add three green green mana uh, and and uh, yeah, we have a might stone and weak stone as well. This is this adds to uh, mana, as well as being a removal spell. I think it's quite good, especially for a mono green deck where we don't have much removal. We're just running a couple of bounces beat downs as our other removal. Uh, but we've got a we have a fair bit of life gain in the deck. So you gain three life from Azusa. Uh, we gain three life from Falaji Excavation. I thought I'll run one copy of this. I don't think it's amazing, but it's maybe it's playable. And I thought I better run, let's see, four copies of Boulder Branch Golem. So this gains life equal to its power. Um, I, I've been beating quite a lot of mono red in the queue, so I think. This is a this is an adaptation to uh, try and stay alive for a bit longer. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we've got uh, twenty five land. I've chucked in three Mishra's foundries, uh, and I've got four crystal grottos as well. But I think eighteen green sources should be enough uh, in a sixty card deck. The, the most difficult thing to cast will be the prototype of the wood caller, which is two green and two. So that in theory you need 16, I'd need 16 green sources in a 60 card deck to do that. So I, sh I should be, sh should be all right. Um, there's a few things we're sort of, we're just trying out. We're trying out the phalagi excavation. We're trying out perennial behemoth. This lets you play land cards from the graveyard. It's not a particularly aggressive creature. It's sort of two seven for five mana uh, but I'm hoping uh, this might be useful um, if my lands start getting blown up uh, usually you'd play this if you're doing a bit of self mill we're not actually we're not actually self milling um, I've gone for the flor floriferous vine wall to look for land which doesn't self mill the other option does Uh, which it, the other option I should point out is Blanchwood Prowler. However, you're only milling, you're only looking at three cards. You're milling three cards to try and find a land and put it into your hand. This is the Vine Wall is twice as likely to find a land because it's looking at six cards. So, I think I, I'm, I'm really, I'm foc more focused on ramping with this deck. So I've gone for the Vine Wall. Uh, we've got 25 land in the deck, which hopefully that's just enough for a Sousa to do the business and actually help me play extra lands. 
Um, they're usually within a Sousa deck. I play about 27 land. Just so you've just got that extra chance of um, being able to use the. Uh, uh, well, make make sure you're hitting the extra land basically. So. Yeah, that's the uh, the choice there. So th you might question. There might be a question mark over the perennial behemoth, uh, but the other thing going on. In fact, I've got an even better idea. A, a better idea than Crystal Grotto would be a land that sacrifices itself. Um, we're not going to go for the uh, Broker's Hideout or Evolving Wilds. Yeah, Blast Zone is going to be a good one. And Demolition Field, which... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's so. This is this is going to make Perennial Behemoth actually make sense in the deck. If we've got lands that sacrifice themselves, the other thought was would call it Automaton is turning lands into creatures, so that, and they then the, they might get blown up. But maybe that's on its own not enough to justify the Behemoth. So uh, Field of Ruin and uh, Demolition Field are exactly the same, I think. Let's have two of each. Let's sort of uh, mix things up a bit. I mean, spot the difference. Is there any difference here? Yeah, they've managed to just put extra text on Demolition Field, but it is the same effect, I think. Uh, and by putting in that extra blast zone, that takes me to down to. I've got to take out a forest. So, 17 green sources. We need 16 for the prototype of woodcaller. We'll see. We'll see how we go with that. Um, hopefully, that will be fine. Yeah. Uh, right. Let's try it out. Yeah, I did start with, uh, so I've got a, a green ramp deck called Bo Rampsu that has the uh, the branch of Baseju, um card, the one that, that digs two forests out of your deck, which is quite a good enchantment. But I've, I'm, I basically pretty much dropped almost everything from that deck apart from the the two drop slot, which is a Susan's Many Journeys and Flor Floriferous Vine Wall. So... Um, but it's still, it's still, it's quite nice to have a, like a, a deck, almost a deck template. So you're sort of not going too over the top in terms of the mana curve. Right. So we have a three land hand and and a Sousa, so we can just about uh, ramp things out. On turn three, we kind of hope we have a, we draw a fourth land. Another Asusa. We don't have any one drops in the deck. But it might be an idea, I suppose. So you see, this is where we've been punished for playing 25 land. We did not uh, we did not get land number four. Well, never mind. We'll play as soon as many journeys again. We like life points. We like three three creatures. So this, may, this might be the first uh, change to the deck. We might just go back, go go up to twenty seven land. I think I can quite easily make a couple of cuts from the deck to do that. Yeah, we've drawn a. We do have a quite a quite a big top end, I suppose. Oh, Shigeki! This guy's going 
pretty ambitious with his deck. It's, it's going to be uh, maybe green blue domain ramp. So this hopefully finds us land number four. Uh, you know, I'm tempted to try and bosage you his dude there, but um, we won't do that. Okay, uh, do we want to demolition fields as far as headquarters? Because I'm thinking it's suspicious he's uh, he's untapped. I don't want to cast Khan. Uh, yes, let's use this first so we're actually tapping some lands. Gonna tap that for some green mana, okay. Yes, please. So you're gonna use that mana. Interesting, yeah, he's gonna be efficient with Shigeki. It's going to be mana efficient, but he's going to take more damage, I think. Okay, we... Oh, nice! It's a Tameshi deck. Uh, there's, there's a Silex in there, the World Spell. Yeah, this is a very um, ambitious deck. I think we're very lucky to uh, actually play against this guy. It's usually mono red all the way. Now, um, yeah, spot the misplay there. There's nothing else I can do with this three mana. I may as well make... The foundry and attack. I was still thinking in my mind he was going to block and bounce the uh, Shigeki, and then I would be able to untap my land. But uh, yeah, he's got he got him. I suppose that could have happened to my foundry. Oh wow, it's an Urza assembles the Titans deck. Uh right, so it's um Planeswalkers as well then. Did he find a planeswalker? Nobody revealed Storm the Festival. Right. Okay, we have six mana. He is tapped out now. He's got one blue mana. He could have a spell pierce, but I think that means I can play Khan Living Legacy and make tapped Power Stone. Geometric perfection. So if we do a mana count, we've got uh, seven. We could play Boulder Branch Golem next turn. The Janny Sleeper Agent of all things. Okay. Creatures and Planeswalkers. Okay. Well, gotta say, his deck is way more interesting than mine. This, uh, yeah, whenever you cast a Kucho Planeswalker spell, target the opponent gains two poison counters. 
That is the the scary plus six part of that. Every day Soul partition. Okay. Um, this only targets creatures. It doesn't target planeswalkers. There is Shigeki. Okay. He has summoning sickness. Right, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a pop at Shigeki here. See if this gets countered. Let me, uh, yeah, we've got full mana. We could do a Boulder Grand Branch Golem here. Right. Um, oh. Let's actually turn Mistress Foundry into a creature and we'll try and take down a Jani. He's got, well, two unknown cards in hand. Well, the deadly repost is going to take out the 3-3. Three, three. Fair it's enough. Not too late to join us. So I'm feeling he's run into a lot of mono-red decks as well. That does seem like a good answer to mono-red. Every That's right. Oh, uh, double loyalty abilities this turn. Reinforcements. So effectively, he's yeah, he's got plus two. And this is this is the scary, scary moment. So. On a value five or less, he gets. Oh, had a good hit. He got Teferi. And another Shigeki. Right. Eyes everywhere. Now that is an interesting. Nice. Well, okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 11 mana. I can uh, attack with an 8-8 eight, eight land, I believe. Um, which one do we go for? Uh... That's a good question. Okay, let's play the we'll actually play the woodcaller at Thompson because we can. Let's go for a forest. Which is gonna be an eight eight. And we'll try and take out a Janny, I think. I'm a bit scared about his ultimate happening. So he's going to lose a spirit, okay. Shigeki. I think definitely looking to um, just ultimate Khan straight away. See if he can take him out. So actually, this is feeling like a game of magic, I've got to say. But he's got a lot of cards. Five cards now. 
Tefri draws him a card. A Jani. Oh, that re that's reveal the top card, isn't it? Don't think he's used a Jani yet. That's right, and he just. Yeah, Tefri gets loyalty cards every time you draw, which is we insane. Oh, distribute three plus one plus one creatures. Creatures? Um. He's going to draw two cards with that, okay. Which gets it to 10-10. It's interesting how quickly that uh, got bigger than the automaton. Does it have trample? It does have vigilance, which is terrifying. Okay, the vine wall will have to jump in the way. Okay, emblem, tap an untapped artifact you control. This emblem deals one damage to any target. We should have... Well, interestingly, we can turn this into an artifact as well. So four, five, six, seven, yeah, we're definitely, embleming now, I think. Do not think. If I miscalculate, hold the perimeter. So he has used up a Janny, pretty much. He's a bit less scary. Uh, it's time to try and take down Teferi, I would say. Three is down. Right. Just keeps getting worse. Let's emblem. With a power stone. And emblem with another power stone. And I think we can play a boulder branch golem for seven. And maybe we want to hold something back. Um, we could... Yeah, let's demolition field his deserted beach. So I'm expecting a board sweeper at any point. It's a land, okay. Okay, Wandering Emperor, that's a problem. Does he have mana to activate that? It's pretty, yeah, probably a good plan keeping something in my hand. Okay, Wandering Emperor is on two.
Yep, so this is activate only as a sorcery and it costs 4 mana, so we can't activate this. This We've got to remember, this can give 2 mana as well, but uh, he didn't have double white available anyway. Um, let's activate a foundry. can take down some planeswalkers. Just like we can, that's good. We have played our part. I'm gonna take out this Thornwood Falls. I'm going to hold my elves back. Oh, he has two more Storm the Festival in the graveyard. I think that probably means he wins. Okay. Ooh, I can pay two to search for a Planeswalker card. Reveal it and put it into my hand. I didn't real. I didn't. That's the hidden ability on uh, on this thing. I do not have any planeswalkers, so I guess now I have to put a, at least one planeswalker in every deck in case I run into, run into the Urza Silex deck again. So he let me guess. I guess uh, you can only do it once. I think you can't just spam planeswalkers. Ren and seven, yeah, figures. One, two, three, four, five, six. He is winning on cards here, it's quite, quite, quite some degree. But he's got a, a ramp up again, I guess, with Renan Seven. Um, before he can flash back his Storm the Festivals. Oh yeah, I think I could have used my emblem there. I forgot about it. Okay, uh, I could loam speaker, loam speaker, but no, I'm gonna keep the pressure up. So let's get in for. I can still do both loam speakers. Uh, now this might be just walking straight into his next. Sweeper, but we'll do it. Probably should have just played one. But if he's using Urza's Silex, he's got multiple copies. We know that's seven mana to use that. That's right, so because it's a Storm the Festival deck, he's, he wants to be using permanence as his board sweepers. That is eight mana he has, so yeah, he can, he can do that again if he has it. Keep looking in the graveyard, it's in the exile pile. Oh yeah, herd migration is the other thing he has, yeah. Fair enough. Right, uh, yeah, that's why you want to kill things with basic land types, but he's got 
all the basic lands. That's the trouble. Uh, I suppose he's, uh, yeah, he's only got one island. Okay, now do we make a couple of forests and attack? No. I don't think so. I think we have a lot of expensive things in our deck and we don't want to trade off lands for three for these three three creatures. Now I think I am at the stage of the game where I could probably concede. Because I've got no cards in hand. He's got four cards and two Storm the Festivals and Storm the Festival Mana. But I'm going to play this game out because that's that's what I prefer to do. Um, and it'll be interesting. He's got an interesting deck. We'll see how it works, I suppose. So that's yeah, that's going to be a problem. Well, we get a vine wall. Blast zone. Hmm. Uh, if we get that up to five charge counters, we can kill Ren and Seven. It can't kill token creatures. That's pretty nice. Um just thought of a, an innovative way I can kill don't don't you dare tap that power stone forest forest activate Mishra's foundry emblem ping ran and seven tap Mishra's foundry Emblem, tap, ping red and seven, tap, power stone. Cool. I nearly missed that one. I think it helped. I said earlier that I can turn Mistress Foundry into an artifact creature. And I seem to remember that. We just have the little matter, little matter of a nine nine to deal with, and a couple more uh, storm the festivals. He is down to twenty four cards. He's gone through uh, twenty three, thirteen more cards than me this game. This doesn't have trample. I suppose. So how many planeswalkers have we killed so far? Jani, Wandering Emperor, Renan Seven, Teferi. And we've survived an Ursa's Silex. Oh, 
Oh, nice. Yeah. That's a nice bit of ramp. Um, okay, we're going to put a token on this. One token, please. Then we could try and blow up a Timeless Lotus. Okay, would call it Automaton. It only makes an 8 8 creature, which is hopelessly small compared to a tree folk. Right, so you're tapping for mana, you're tapping for mana as well. Oh, oh, I tapped my power stone. This is what happens when you 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 give the auto tapper a bit too much leeway. I was supposed to ping his face with my uh, emblem, you see. Now, uh, interesting point. That is a land that I can keep if he does try another versus Silex. That could be important. Should be able to tap this at least to ping him. Oh. Okay, well, let's use this. Let's ping you with that. Let's not miss a point of dam free damage. I can tap that clue and ping him as well. That's pretty cool. There we go, Storm the Festival. That's going to dig two more cards out of his deck. He got a land, and he got Tamio. This is pretty cool. He's got sort of um, one of every Planeswalker, I think, in, in uh, bank colors. I'm loving this deck. So that's... That's five casting cost as well. I do have a Nexile target. Normal land permanent card with mono value X from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy. Oh, he's. Ah, that's a nice ability, isn't it? So Tamiyo's been uh, sacrificed for that. And then he can make more huge creatures. Because he got, he does have copies of his planeswalkers. Fair enough. Oh, that's getting tapped. Now uh, we can tap this guy for mana to pop the clue, but we might want to use the clue to. Okay, so let's. I think this guy's pretty scary because he just keeps making tree folk. But I could be wrong. And then I am going to activate that with my two mana. Because having an extra card has got to be good, I think. You cannot delay our victory. Okay. 
Right, uh, we're always planning to trade Opportunist for one of these guys. Uh, the wall can jump in the way of the tree folk. Right. Just thinking opportunist and clear cutter. How much mana have we got? Well, we need to. It does create a tapped power stone token. Okay. Without further ado. We'll take out Ren and Seven. It might have been the wrong choice. It might have been the wrong choice. So, but we won't worry too much about that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine mana. And yet we can Argothian Opportunist and do a full cost dude here. But we need a couple of chump blockers, don't we? That's the only problem. But we can survive a bit of damage. Yeah, 22 damage. Uh, and we'll play a clear cutter. And that is a good blocker for a beast. That's another point of ping damage. So I've never, I think that's the first time I've ever seen uh, that Tamiyo minus X ability, which is pretty fantastic. I guess it's probably the first time I've seen Tamiyo. Actually, that's not true. I did see someone play Tamiyo in draft. They had two Planeswalkers, actually. But I think he just tapped down my stuff. Well, that's uh, that's a nice one. So he's got two more of his planeswalkers. Nice hit. This can tap things as well. Artifact, creature, and one land. He can tap three of my things if he wants. So, artifact, creature, untaps one of his lands, gets through with... Um, 28 damage. So Tamiyo... Okay. He brought back as assembles the Titans, so he can activate royalty abilities twice. That's nice. Okay, yep, we are activating our emblem here. To take out Tamiyo. No matter. Second here, second there. Who's counting? A 
question is, do I want to play another game after this one? I think I probably ought to just to... Uh, we'll probably play mono red and there'll be quite a contrast. But this is a, this seems like a good enough game to uh, let's do this be a video, really. Okay, that's got Vigilance. Show them what you've got. Right, I think we do we do play one more game. Uh, we have but we have seen Woodcaller Automaton. We actually we cast two of them that game. And they were quite they were quite good. Uh that was an unusual game. We probably maybe we want to see this deck in um a more normal situation, which is, you know, mono red. Uh and there's I've i I've kind of uh well, I've put in some life gain, so hopefully we've got a good match up with Mono Red. But uh, maybe maybe we'll get another uh, Bant uh, Super Friends deck. You never know. You don't off, you don't always yeah. It's not too often you get to. Uh, Emblem, uh, Ultimate uh, Khan. Okay, we've got three ramp, three drops. It's not the fastest start, but maybe it'll do. We are on the play. But, uh, you know, got to acknowledge that. I always complain when I'm on the draw, but um, for once we're on the play against red. It is red, of course it's red, but uh, uh, let's get out a Mishra's Foundry before I forget to play it. And we could actually besage you that rabbit battery, which is a fascinating possibility. Okay. Alright. There is another besage you target. Blue red artifacts. I should have known. The rabbit battery is not seeing much play in mono red these days. Okay. Another land. I'm, I'm happy top decking two lands there. Uh, we are going to play the opportunist. We might get a chance to play this for six mana, so let's let's hold that for a little while. It's a mechanized warfare. Okay, but he's not attacking. Okay, do we both sage you that? Right, wood cooler automaton on taps a land. Khan Living Legacy can make me a Power Stone token. I could Opportunist, and I can still besage you. The Mechanized Warfare. Because it's an ability, so the Power Stone should be able to fuel it. No attacks and enter. Reconfigure onto the automaton. Yep. Is it give it plus one plus one? Okay. It's going to concede there, okay. Fair enough. It wasn't much of a game. It was a win. I think... 
I'm not going to keep, uh, yeah, keep trying to play games because uh, I think we've 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 got the really the classic game <laughs> uh, in the first attempt, and we just got a quick win there because we maybe he just recognised oh well he's a, it's a green deck he's managed to ramp and uh, you know he's he's going to be a red deck that with um, voltage surge and I'm going to be about to play some big creatures that he can't kill. That might that might have been his thinking. Anyway. Uh yeah, but in the first game we did get to see Woodcaller Automaton. It got to kill some uh, planeswalkers. Which was cool. We realized the 8-8 um land creature might be something you can choose when someone uses their as a silex because it's a, a land so it could actually could be could be advantageous a lot of people see this card and think well that just lets my opponent kill one of my lands with his removal spell which is true but it might not be the full story there um yeah so very very simple straightforward mono green ramp deck and we're gonna we just try and cast some big big things, and uh, it's it did a decent job of casting big things, so I'm happy with that. We even saw Khan uh, do his ultimate, and we have this idea here of um, field of ruin plus perennial behemoth. We didn't see that happen, but that that seems like quite a good idea. We saw. Uh, and uh, yeah, there was a few like interesting interactions with Khan's ultimate, realizing obviously you can make, you can activate Mistress Foundry to turn it into an artifact that you can use to ping something, and your cre creatures, artifact creatures with summoning sickness can be used to ping things as well, and having to just carefully tap your mana so you don't accidentally use Power Stone tokens. Um, which could otherwise be used to ping things. So, kind of, kind of interesting. Anyway, I think that is a video. Uh, thanks for watching.